In this video, we're going to have a look at question 6b from the 2007 HSC Extension 1 exam. And the question is this. Consider the following function, f of x equals e to the x minus e to the minus x. Part i, show that f of x is increasing for all values of x. Then show that the inverse of f of x is given by that expression there. And then hence or otherwise, solve e to the x minus e to the minus x equal to 5 giving your answer correct to two decimal places. All right, so part one. This is my function, and I need to show that it's uh, increasing for all values of x. All right, so let's write the function down. f of x equals e to the x minus e to the minus x. Now, to show something is increasing for all values of x, let's take its derivative. So f dash x is equal to derivative of e to the x is e to the x minus the derivative of e to the negative x is negative 1 times e to the negative x. So here I have e to the x, I'm a negative and a negative is a positive, e to the negative x. Now if this is increasing for all values of x, that means its derivative should be greater than 0. And is that the case? Well, yes it is. This is greater than 0. Why? Because e to the x is always greater than 0, so I can say e to the x is always greater than 0, and e to the negative x is always greater than 0 for all values of x. Maybe I should say and. So for all values of x. All right, so every exponential function is always greater than 0. We should know that. So if I'm adding up two things that are always going to be positive, well then that means that their sum should be always positive for all values of x. So I'll just say for all x. Okay, and if the function's derivative is strictly greater than 0 for all x, well then that means that f of x is increasing. Is increasing. And there we go, we've done the first part of this question. There's a mark. All right, part two. Show that the inverse function is given by this. So I just have to find the inverse function of this thing here. All right, let's just put part two. Okay, I need to find the inverse of this. So, the way we do that, we have f of x, and what's that? That's y equal to e to the x minus e to the minus x. So I've just rewritten it. Now, to find the inverse function, what we do is we swap the x and y coordinates. So I have x is equal to e to the y minus e to the minus y. So I've just swapped the x and y coordinates. And now I need to rearrange to have an expression for y equal to something in terms of x, so that I can say that the inverse function of x is equal to, obviously, something in terms of x. Okay, so how can I rearrange this thing here? Well, hopefully you might have a bit of familiarity with a question like this, but if not, the trick is to recognize that this is actually a quadratic in disguise, and we, we need to uncover that quadratic equation. So it's actually going to be a quadratic in terms of e to the power y. So it might not be so clear at the moment, but if we multiply both sides of this equation by e to the power y, things will start to be a bit more clear. So it's e to the power y times e to the power y minus e to the negative y. Okay, now that stays as it is. Now I have e to the y times e to the y. That will be e to the 2y. And here I have well, e to the y times negative of e to the negative y, well e to the y times e to the negative y is like e to the y times 1 over e to the y, and of course these two will cancel out and I'm left with 1. So this term here is actually just 1, so I have minus 1. Now let me bring everything over to the one side, so e to the 2y, now bringing this over here would be negative x e to the y minus 1 equals 0. And maybe it's still not clear, but this is a quadratic because I can use my exponent laws and this becomes e to the y all squared minus x e to the y minus 1 equals 0. And now I can say I have something of the form, uh, where do we have, x squared, maybe not use x, let's use another letter, u squared minus x which is just a constant so I can maybe call it a x minus another constant b is equal to 0. So now that I have that, I can go ahead and solve it for e to the y. 
And to do that, I'll just use the quadratic equation. So e to the y is going to be, I should have called this b and this c, and this is a. Okay, so that's gotten a bit messy here, but I'm sure you can follow along. And that should be a u. Well, how do you like that? It's gotten very messy. Okay, so anyway, a quadratic equation would be minus b. So what's my b? My b is negative x. So I have negative of negative x, which is positive x, plus or minus the square root of b squared. Now b is negative x, like we said, so it's negative x all squared, minus 4 times a, which in my case is 1, times c, which is negative 1, divided by 2 times a, so 2 times 1, which is 2. Okay, let's simplify a little bit. x plus or minus, this becomes x squared. That becomes negative 4 times negative 1, which is positive 4. Square root divided by 2. e to the y. And so all that's left is to take the log of both sides. And I get x plus or minus the square root of x squared plus 4 divided by 2. Now, is that exactly what we want? It's almost there. The only difference is here... I don't have a plus or minus, I just have the one case, which is the positive. So how can I justify eliminating the negative here? Well, we have a logarithm, and we know that the argument, whatever's inside the logarithm, we know that that has to be positive. So I can say that x is equal to the square root of x squared. Now I'm going to modify this side a little bit. I'm going to make this side x squared plus 4, like I have in here. So I've actually made this side bigger. So in doing that, I have to write this as an inequality now. Maybe I should write here but, because now I'm justifying. I can say but x equals the square root of x squared. Fine. I also know that x is less than the square root of x squared plus 4 because I've actually made this side bigger. And once I move this over to this side, this is what I get. I have that this entire thing is less than 0. And so when I divide it by 2, that's dividing by a positive constant, the inequality still remains. So now that I have that, I can say, therefore, since ln, or the log, um, is not defined for negative values, for negative values, I have to have that y equals ln of x plus the square root of x squared plus 4 divided by 2. Right, and I've excluded the negative case, and so that is my inverse function now. Because now I have y, oh sorry, x, y in terms of x, right? My expression is in terms of x. Alright, and the very last part, hence or otherwise, solve e to the x minus e to the negative x equals 5. And then give your answer correct to two decimal places. So solving this thing, let's write it down. Part 3. I'm solving e to the x minus e to the negative x equals 5. Now the question said hence or otherwise. Whenever a question says hence, that means that you can use the previous parts, or they're probably wanting you to use the previous parts of the question in order to solve it. And if you have a look, this question is only worth one mark, so it shouldn't be too difficult using the information that we've already worked out. So, how can I use the hence part of the question to actually solve what I need to solve? Well, what do I have? I have e to the x minus e to the negative x is equal to 5. Now this looks familiar, that was my original function up here. And I've substituted, where, where I've got a y here, below I have a 5. Let's bring it down, I have a 5. So what I've done is, I've put a 5 wherever I see a y. Now this is it, the normal function. When I take the inverse function, I've, I've swapped the x and y coordinates. So solving this equation, which I'm going to label, let's get a different color, maybe blue. I'm going to label this equation 1, and here I'm going to label this equation 2. By substituting, subbing y equal to 5 
in one, in equation one, which is my original function, that's equivalent to subbing x equal to five in two, which is my inverse function. Because remember, all I've done is swapped the values of x and y to, to get that inverse function. So if I've subbed y equals five in the initial one, I sub in x equal to five in equation two. And so this here will become y equal to log of, what is this, 5 plus the square root of 5 squared plus 4 divided by 2, which is, okay, that's 25 plus 4, so that's the square root of 29. I have log of 5 plus the square root of 29 divided by 2. And if I put that into my calculator, what do I get? Let's see, I wrote it down somewhere before. I should get 1.65 when I round off to uh, two decimal places, as the question asked. So that there is the solution. Now, I've written x here, but I've written y, but it should be x, because this is in terms of x. But really, the, the, the letter here is not really important. This is the solution to this equation here. And thanks for watching.